Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. This is the collect, the opening prayer which gathered our thoughts together that we prayed at the beginning of Mass for the first Sunday of Advent. Grant your faithful, we pray, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ. How? With righteous deeds at his coming. Advent, the word means the coming, coming of Christ. And this period of preparation, 25 days between now and Christmas, the church gives us as a time to go back once again, go back to the basics, to go back and focus on that which is most important. For the world outside, that which is most important is sales. We had Black Friday, we're gonna have Cyber Monday, and I'm sure they'll come up with all kinds of designations for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, until the next week. All around, we will see an increasing frenetic pace as families try and get their shopping done, as Christmas cards have to be sent out. I just realized I haven't even started that. We're gonna be waiting, traveling, and then on the 26th, we'll have another set of sales, and then we'll start looking at Valentine's Day. Or New Year's Day, I don't know, whichever. That's the world outside. Frenetic pace, stress. This time is associated with stress. Sometimes when there is strain in families, it brings its own kind of pain and stress when families sort of feel forced to get together, or when there's a loss of a loved one or other kinds of things. The church completely oblivious to what's going on in the world, tells us this is a time for us to be quiet. This is a time for us to focus. This is a time for us to go back to the perennial Christian battle of taking God at his word and treating him as if he is the most important person in our life, which we all pay lip service to. And in the routine of our lives and in the various ways in which our relationship with God has been, that kind of falls by the wayside. We start Advent recalling that we do need God. The prophet Isaiah reminds us that we have sinned and that God is in his mercy turning to us to reshape us like a potter reshapes the clay. Without this recognition of our need for God, that is our own brokenness, our own limitedness, our own inability to fix everything in our life by ourselves, even though we have tried and we've tried again and it ends up in the same way, we're not gonna move forward. Advent is about moving forward. If we're not moving forward, we are asleep. And Jesus warns us not to be asleep, but to be alert, to be watchful. The letter, first letter of St. John describes the human condition and its tendency to sin with these phrases that come from the scriptures. It calls it the concupiscence or the lust of the flesh, our senses, the lust of the eyes, that is our greed and desire for material possessions, and the pride of life that says, I am the measure of all things and everything else must bend to who I am and the way I think things should be. And against this, there are threefold remedies, always given in the practice of the church. Against the lust of the flesh, there's fasting to discipline our passions. Against the desire to possess, there's almsgiving to sharing of our resources. And against pride, there is constant call to prayer to recognize that we are creatures and we're not God. So this Advent, pray, fast. Give alms. Advent is a penitential season, sort of like a mini Lent. That's why I'm wearing purple. That's why we don't wear, um, we don't sing the Gloria. In the externals, things are going to be ramping up towards Christmas on TV and the stores and all of that. That's fine. There are some who say, oh, we should, you know, we shouldn't say the word Christmas until Advent is over. Don't be a Grinch. You know, go to your Christmas parties if your co-workers are not Catholic or having them. That's fine. Celebrate, celebrate what everyone is supposed to be celebrating, which isn't a holiday or the winter solstice, but the birth of the Son of God. And joyfully and with great love, say Merry Christmas to, to your friends and coworkers. I come from a land where it doesn't matter what religion you were, 
At this time, everyone says Merry Christmas. You travel by train or by plane in India, this time you'll hear Merry Christmas. Hindus will say it, Muslims will say it. No one gets offended by this idea. And we'd say that at other people's festivals too. Happy Diwali or Happy Eid, as the case may be. That's the externals. Internally, however, the most important kind of battle, our relationship with God, and all of us are at different levels with this. Move forward. Move forward. If you go to Mass less than weekly, I'll start going weekly. That's the minimum. That's the bare minimum. Don't make your schedule and then put God somewhere in it. Put God first and build your life around Him. If you do come to Mass and leave early, don't leave early. I really don't understand this, and I've said this several times, so I'll say my, repeat myself again. Like a good preacher, a preacher repeats himself until it gets, gets through. We're not here just to get our magical communion thing. If that were the case, we could dispense with this whole charade. We would have a vending machine out there. You put your envelope in, get communion, and go off. Everyone would be happy. Mass would be so much shorter. We're here to worship God. We're here to conform our lives to the word that is proclaimed and to Christ who comes down from heaven, taking on our flesh to enter into us so that we will be transformed into him who is life, the kind of life that each of us really desires that comes only from him. Stay through the end of mass this Advent season. If you don't pray every day, start. If you do, increase the time that you spend with the Lord. As you're preparing your Christmas gift planning, my challenge to you will be calculate what it is, maybe reduce what you have to spend on that, but take 10% of that and give it to the poor in some way. Either through the angel tree out there or through some other charity, I mean our St. Joseph charity is here, or in some other way, someone in need. Make your Christmas gift giving be more than just a frenetic ritual that you do just for your family, but include the poor in that. Pray about it. Do it intentionally. Do it intentionally. Children can be encouraged to share what they've received, either in the family or if they get some money to maybe put some of that aside again for the poor. It's a good, good practice to start inculcating in our children. Try fasting on Friday. Friday is a day of penance. Fast. Maybe give up meat or reduce one meal or don't go to Starbucks or whatever it might be. Fast. The main thing that I want you all to focus on that I'm going to invite the whole parish to do is open the Gospel of Mark. It's the shortest gospel, so it's an easy task, 16 chapters as opposed to 28 in Matthew. Open it. Between now and Christmas, that's 25 days, less than one chapter a day, and read it. Read it as if you've never read it before. Read it as if you don't know who Jesus is. And as you're reading, read it slowly and prayerfully, and see the portrait of Jesus that emerges from the Gospel of Mark. And also the portrait of the disciples. They come across rather badly. Do that. Open those Bibles and go through the Gospel of Mark. Maybe with your friends, maybe as a family. Don't ask questions like, what does this mean necessarily, or try and find commentaries. That's good. I mean, it's okay. But really, the focus is, who is Jesus? What kind of a portrait of Jesus am I getting from this, the one of the four Gospels? These are all ways in which we can make this season a time of preparation for the great celebration of the birth of Christ. And then we should party for 12 days, 12 days of Christmas. I mean, that hymn is that song is about Christmas season starting on Christmas Day and going to Epiphany. It's not the 12 days before. It's the 12 days after. Keep your decorations up. Have your Christmas parties in the Christmas season. Keep saying Merry Christmas to confound everybody until the Epiphany and after. Share your gifts then. Send your Christmas cards then. The way I go, I'm so late. My Christmas cards always get sent in the Christmas season. But most importantly, keep moving forward. Do not let your faith be something that is routine, something that is done once in a while, something that is done as if we're sleepwalking. The Lord tells us, be alert, be awake, be watchful, because he is going to come. He wants to come anew in this season of Advent into your heart one more time. 
one more time in a new way and draw you closer to him. And that is why we are here. That is why the church exists. That is why he created us so that he can shower us with a gift that he is himself. God who is goodness, God who is beauty, God who is truth and who is love. Grant your faithful, we pray, almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.